Honest Truth with Benito Vergatini on Smile 90.4 FM. Shifting our sights now towards tech and the introduction of 5G. Well, it's been on the ground in limited areas for a good few months. In fact, towards the end of last year, um, if my memory serves correct. But there's huge application potential but more especially for business as opposed to you and I as consumers because there are one or two challenges. In in fact, I caught up with Jacques Tatoy. He's the CEO at Vox to talk more around 5G and what the landscape looks like at the moment. Although many South Africans view 5G as just a faster way to download videos and reach multimedia to their smartphones, It is, in fact, enterprises and the industrial sector that have the most to gain from this fast-developing cellular network standard. Joining us to shed light and, in fact, on how we can unlock our country's enterprise sector through 5G solutions is Jacques Dutoy, CEO at Vox. Jacques, good evening and thank you so much for joining us. Good evening, Vrita. Firstly, what are some of the challenges that individuals will face when using 5G? So uh, there's quite a few that I think needs to be be pondered on, and uh, but I'll, I'll start with the ones that impacts the, the, uh, someone's pocket the most, and that is the cost of data and the cost of the handset. From what we've seen internationally, um, the most basic basic 5G handset will start in and around the 690 odd dollars, um, and data in the more kind of dominant countries, you will see the data cost for 5G being roughly 20 to 25 percent more expensive. So you know, there's really got to be a consumer application that is very worthwhile and that either saves money or improves your lifestyle significantly in order to justify those additional costs. So I think those are the two the two most obvious ones. What's the cost of my data? Cost of my handset? And obviously, seeing that you can download data. Five to 15 times faster compared to 4G, uh, your data consumption will be a lot more. So um, individuals that subscribe to CAP packages will reach their CAPs much quicker than they would have uh, done using 4G. 5G, though, does have somewhat of a footprint, I think, since November last year. Is it mainly for, for individual consumers or is it utilized in the industrial space as well? So the way the mobile operators is positioned it was to kind of rally up the consumer demand. They've done very little to educate uh, the industrial space, the commercial and retail space. It's all about trying to get consumers to invest into 5G technology, a 5G handset, creating the hype that consumers will benefit the most. Uh, but, you know, Benito, when I ask a consumer, what do you think, what will 5G do for you? 90% of individuals will tell me, I can download a movie faster on my telephone. Um, and my argument is, but you're not going to watch the movie faster. So what's the point in, <laughs> in paying additional cost for downloading that movie faster? So the tests we've seen running are, are more consumer-related. It's uh, a point-to-point, i.e. fixed wireless. So they will put a 5G device in someone's house or in someone's office. It will have a direct connection to a pay station somewhere in the vicinity. Um, and the speed tests are then conducted over that type of installation. Very little tests have been done on handsets moving around. And I think the, the not I think I know the reason for that is to deploy a very, very fast uh, 5G mobile network, you need a myriad of antennas deployed in a very close area. So the moment a handset moves outside an area with these densely populated antennas, you will see a reduction in speed. So, um, you know, that comes to your point, you know, where were these tests conducted, consumer or corporate, a very small sample uh, in a very confined area to prove the speed. So it's, it's what we've seen being published by uh, the different analysts aren't really a true reflection in my mind. So where do you think, Jacques, will be the area where 5G will be the most beneficial? So if you go, if you unpack the technologies like it, um, 5G is about latency. Um, and latency in layman's terms is the speed it takes for a packet to um, move from point A to point B. Now we, I, I think most of us being this lockdown period, of, all of us have basically used video conferencing. And from time to time you'll see a little bit of a jitter on the screen or I'll be talking and the guy will only be responding later on the other side. And that's all got to do with latency. 
Now, the moment you've bedded latency down and you get down to basically zero millisecond latency, decisions can be made instantaneously, data accuracy um, or, or data can be analyzed much quicker. And therefore, it unlocks a whole lot of value in the Internet of Things space, in education, in uh, e-medicine, uh, which again is not for me a consumer application. Those are corporate and industrial applications. So I really see the opportunity in virtual reality, augmented reality, Internet of Things, fourth industrial revolution. That's where we will see the biggest benefit. You know, you can effectively end up running a factory without people 24 hours a day in uh, mines, can have all the... The, the trucks and excavators operate on that mine unmanned because you can make decisions instantaneously. And this certainly will benefit real-time analysis of, of data, as you point out there, Jacques. Yeah, I think the, the, the fact that you can do real-time data analysis, just take the medical environment as an example, uh, distance operations. We've been talking about remote operations for a long time. The technology is there to support it, but the bandwidth has never been there because of latency-related issues. Now you can effectively, if you've got the right equipment on the other side uh, of South Africa or the other side of the world, with 5G bandwidth and zero latency, you can conduct a remote operation. I mean, imagine how many lives you can change by making that available. I suppose the one big question we need to get some understanding around is the current spectrum challenges that 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 come with with 5G allocation. From from a observer's point of view, like quite a minefield. Can you unpack it for us? Yeah, I think there's two things uh, to consider, or there's really three, three things: the regulations around the issuing of spectrum. You know, our ECOSA government has been talking about finalizing the 4G allocation as well as the 5G auction for how many years now? So we, and unless we understand the regulations that will govern the release of that spectrum, no one really knows what uh, solutions they can provide, how they can price it, what the obligations will be um, as, as a network provider. So first of all, we need to bear down the regulations around it. The second thing is the pricing or the bidding mechanism. Are they going to make the spectrum available to the highest bidder, which really leaves it to the to the dominant players at the end of the day, or are they going to make spectrum available at a reasonable price to um, the new challenges in the market, which I think is really important. It's time that South Africa, you know, it's, it's time that the challenges really come, rise up and, and give those dominant players a run for their money. Um, the third thing is the licensing fees, because that will be a direct cost passed on to the consumer. So the higher the, the spectrum bid, the more uh, onerous the licensing fees, the more expensive the data packages will be. And then we might not even see a 20% in, uh, a 20% excess compared to 4G. You might see a 50% excess compared to 4G. And then the last one is how they physically allocate the spectrum. Because you can only really have this low latency product if your bands are in close pro proximity, so they're right next to each other on the spectrum chart, and you've got a wide, a, a wide frequency range. So our ECASA has got a lot of work still to do before um, we see a real mature 5G network being deployed. Because am I correct in understanding that if these concerns around spectrum is 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 not sorted out, uh, I think in best interests of, of all stakeholders within the industry, that even the benefits of 5G become rather mute because you need the spectrum to fully utilize the potential of 5G? Yeah, uh, and, and you know, during the, I think it was level... Four, if I'm not mistaken, of the of the lockdown, our government made available unused uh, 4G spectrum and limited 5G spectrum to current operators that have deployed some radios on our sites. Now that was done on a temporary basis, with intent to take it back. So but if I, if I read all, you know, if I listen to everybody's commentary, that spectrum needs to be handed back in and around November so that we can finalize that first auction or allocation in December. That's for the 4G spectrum and then 5G next year. And I ask myself the question, how will these operators that have now deployed it make the service available, how are they going to just hand it back? Yes. In practice, it doesn't work like that. So we've got that to deal with. The other points I, I, I mentioned earlier on, 
And yes, if we don't, if we don't do this in a super fast, super efficient way, you should probably see another three, four years go by before South Africa gets the benefit of that use. I wanted to ask you, are you confident with the time frames that they are suggesting that this will be no, sorted out by? No, no, definitely not. <laughs> and you know, I'm, I'm a super optimist. Um, you know, I always see the silver lining, but I think we've just seen too many deadlines being missed. Unfortunately, nothing happens if you miss a deadline. Um, so, no, I'm optimistic that in time it will happen, but will it happen by December? And will we see the 5G bid happen early next year? I doubt it. Speed is of the essence, though, particularly given our economic challenges. And if 5G presents a potential for, for industry and business, as you pointed out this is earlier, Jacques, then surely it will serve South Africa's interest to sort this out sooner rather than later? Yeah, I think think there's a lot of uh, industry lobbying happening. There's a lot of pressure. But, you know, at the end of the day, it boils down to an individual or two or three actually making it happen. Someone's sticking their hand up and say, you know, I'll take ownership. I know how to execute. I've got a team that backs me, and let's go and make it happen. So so we need that combination uh, to take place. But the pressure is the industry is begging. I mean, the mobile operators need to re-farm existing 4G spectrum. We will, everybody is fully acutely aware how many new economic models can be unlocked with the launch of 5G spectrum. Uh, it will stimulate a whole new segment in the market, education, medical, as mentioned before. So the, the pressure is definitely on, and I think uh, it's now about just the execution. Jacques Dutoy, CEO at Vox. Appreciate your time and your insights on this, Jacques. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Benito. I really appreciate it. Have a good evening. Smile, 90.4 FM.